Oh no, the one is from there. Okay. okay. Hello, testing. Okay. okay, hi, I'm Kevin from IMDA. Uh, I'm here to share about Lilac Flow. Uh, but for context, um, actually I work on a national speech corpus, so I'm not sure how many of you guys are actually familiar with this, but we actually released like version one last year. So we've been working on this for two years and just last month we released additional data for this. So what is the National Speech Corpus? Um, it's actually a very large audio data set. So there's about 3,000 hours of recording so far. Uh, so we have the speech audio, the transcripts of what the speakers actually said. And we also have the lexicon, which is like the pronunciation of all the words in the transcript. So actually uh, we have about 70,000 words now. And the link, we actually uh, collaborate with uh, NTU on this. So we, they have linguists there and they actually help to transcribe all the pronunciations for the words in the corpora. So um, we made sure that uh, it was collected from a diverse, uh, the diverse population of Singapore. So we made sure that the different age groups are all catered for. So most of it were the younger people, but middle-aged people and the elderly people were included as well. Uh, gender, we made sure it was male and female. And then for the, the ethnic groups, we made sure that for Malay and Indians, there's about a 20% rep representation for each of them. So we also design it such that uh, the local people's name, the street names, uh, the building names and brands are all captured. And what's the purpose of all this? It's actually for, generally it's actually for automatic speech recognition. We wanted uh, for existing speech technologies and uh, providers uh, to actually adapt their technology to Singapore. And also to enable the local companies and research institutes here to experiment and develop speech enabled solutions for Singapore. So I'll just go into a little bit of detail to give you a bit of context. So uh, 3,000 hours, we actually have uh, 2,000 hours of read speech. So the speakers actually come down and they actually read off prompts. So for the first 1,000 hours, uh, it's actually phonetically balanced scripts. So we made sure that there's phonetic coverage in the script. So the A to Z is all pronounced. And then for another 1,000 hours, we made sure that we wanted to capture all the local terms like the street names and everything so the speakers will actually uh, I can give you some examples here please show me the way to Red Hill Coast please tell me how to get to Jurong Point yes so very Singaporean accented so yeah. moving on uh, red speech how, how do we collect it there were actually three channels of collection to sort of uh, simulate the different uh, rec rec uh, audio, rec uh, audio recording environments that were possible. So uh, close talk was recorded, far field was recorded, so a mic on the table and a mobile phone recording as well. So for red speech, generally speakers tend to pronounce and articulate very clearly. Uh, so all the use case for this is when a speaker knows that they are actually speaking to an AI, so they actually pronounce very clearly. But um, Beyond just red speech, uh, there are times when uh, you might want to have transcription of meeting minutes or for example. So we need to collect a style of speech called spontaneous conversational speech. So there are no prompts. Maybe we just give the, the speakers some topics and then they actually have to uh, discuss upon, uh, on these topics uh, spontaneously. So for one of the other parts that we did was another 1000 hours uh, where we tried to simulate com uh, conversations between two different speakers. So yeah, like what I mentioned is spontaneous in style. So besides just the obvious uh, use case of uh, automatic speech recognition, we actually also uh, uh, doubled a bit in text-to-speech and uh, Copra can actually support this. So I will actually show you uh, some examples of this. This is a voice trained on 200 utterances. This is a voice trained on 1,000 utterances. This is a voice trained on 2,500 utterances. This is a voice trained on 6,000 utterances. Yeah, so uh, you guys can see that the more data you actually uh, use to train your voice model, the, 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 the naturalness actually improves by quite a bit. And this is a Singaporean accent, so it's very, uh, it feels more comfortable for the local uh, users here. So one other thing besides just uh, the accent, there's also the pronunciation. So if you remember earlier, uh, I actually said that there was a lexicon developed, there were 70,000 words. And so of these 70,000 words, uh, the linguists, they actually try to find what are the local words. Uh, not all of, some of it are common English words, so those are very well, uh, I mean the TTS uh, services, they actually pronounce those words correctly, but what about the local words? So we identify the local words and then we toss it into a database. 
and then we had the corresponding uh, IPA pronunciation uh, map to it. So with this, if you want to synthesize uh, an, an utterance or a sentence with a local word, you can actually look up this database and then if there's a local word that you know that the TTS will not perform well in, you can actually swap it in with uh, the IPA. So one way to do this is uh, TTS engines, they actually support something called the speech synthesis markup language. So it's like a, it's a schema where you can actually input how you want uh, the, the text to sound, sound like. So uh, besides just the pronunciation, you can actually do like speed or maybe tones. Okay, so one, uh, I'll show you an example of uh, how the SSML is used. I've traveled from Tanjong Pega to Bedok just to have my favorite Aryan Brandon. I've traveled from Tanjong Pega to Bedok just to have my favorite Aryan Brandon. Yes, yeah, so you can see with the lexicon and the natural speech corpus, the pronunciation is now uh, much more palatable to the local population here. Actually, and the example of what was being sent to the text to speech engine is below. You can actually see that for the words that were identified as local words, it's all. Uh, the IPA is actually pr uh, pushed in there. Okay, so uh, just, uh, just uh, this was just a quick uh, presentation on the natural speech corpus before I move into dialect flow. Uh, on the left is actually where you can uh, register and download the national speech corpus. It's actually uh, made free for use uh, for non-commercial and commercial use uh, under the open data license. Um, and it's actually 800 gigabytes of data, and we are distributing it via Dropbox. On the right is actually a research paper that we did. Uh, we, we pub and it's actually published and we presented it at Interspeech 2019. So you can actually go there and uh, take a look at the paper, which uh, describes in more detail how the corpora was uh, the designed and developed. OK, so um, what we have done is we have taken the national speech corpus. We have done some acoustic uh, modeling, very basic acoustic modeling uh, and uh, language modeling, and we developed uh, an automatic speech recognition engine. We didn't use Google's because it's a black box to us, but we use, made use of an open source Caldi engine. Um, so we can do some basic ASR. So next, I, from what I showed you just now, we did some voice modeling, uh, text-to-speech engine. And then we had some pronunciation reference also from the speech corpus to allow pronunciations to be correct. But this is not very, because we, we wanted to, uh, to get people to adopt speech technologies, but just saying, hey, we have this data set, uh, make use of it, it's, it's not very, it's quite boring, actually. Maybe for the data scientists, they'll be very excited, but for developers, they can't really make uh, use of this. So, so what we had something missing in the middle, which was uh, some kind of chatbot framework or conversational interface that we, we were looking for to try and bring this to life. So we were, we were trying to find the conversational interface. So about maybe three months back, we, we had all this data and we had to present this during uh, IMDA's uh, industry day. But just going there and say, hey, uh, take, look at this QR code, download the copra and try and work, around, work with it. It's, it's actually, you can't really get much traction and propagation. So we wanted to find some way to bring this, uh, this project to life and actually demo it to the layman. So, um, we, we were looking around and uh, one of my colleagues in IMDA uh, actually uh, sent me an email and said, hey, uh, Google and Cloud Ace, the Google partner, were presenting at uh, IMDA Pixel R back there. So, so we thought, oh, hey, let's go down and uh, attend the tutorial for Dialogflow. So they presented it and I thought, hey, this uh, actually gets the conversational UI up pretty quickly. And then uh, we, we wanted to sort of... Uh, do a showcase on this. So we what? So we have, after after we got some basic idea of how dialog flow worked, we we saw uh, start to think uh, what use case we can actually show. So we decided uh, to do a food ordering speech AI assistant. Although this is actually the default. Uh, if you go to tutorials online, a lot of people actually do the ordering of pizzas and everything. So uh, it's quite a. A use case that everybody like to demo for uh, the speech uh, dialog flow, but usually those demos come from a chatbot and text point of view. So what we wanted to do was, uh, for our use case, we tried to scope it down a, bit, a little bit more. So uh, users can relate to calling a waiter at a very busy restaurant. You know, you, you try and call a waiter five minutes five minutes later, and they, and they still haven't served you. So we thought, hey, why not? Uh, this might be a good use case where people can understand why you might want a, an AI assistant on the table. So. Uh, for this case, uh, users will actually have a physical menu that they can refer to, 
and then uh, they can browse at their leisure and once they're ready, they summon the AI assistant. Okay, so the showcase, it also sort of showcases that uh, the local food we, we have can be recognized and pronounced by the AI. That's why we settled on this. So this is the concept that we sort of brought to life. Uh, yeah, you have a restaurant and then people can take turns to order from the AI assistant. So one, one thing that we decided to do before we moved into the dialogue flow was that we decided for this, the speech recognition part of it, uh, we decided to do uh, push to talk. So it sort of removes the need for speech detection, which can actually cause uh, awkward voice activation. Uh, there's also awkward when the speech detection fails, like if you're trying to make an order and then you, ha you haven't finished your order and then it cuts off and then you try to process it. Also, noisy environment. So uh, it might fail to detect an end of speech due to the noise. Okay, so and we tried this and it actually still sort of feels natural for this use case and with the user in full control of the AI assistant. It's also slightly more robust, which I'll demonstrate later. So how does, does this work? Uh, I'll try it out now. I don't know whether it's set up yet. Hello. Pardon me, I couldn't hear anything from you. <laughs> okay, I think this is the first time someone tried to do a demo of a speech bot in this manner, but uh, okay, let's move on. Looks like it works. Okay, so dialogue flow. Moving into dialogue flow, uh, high level overview. I don't want to go into all the nitty gritty details, but I would like to touch on certain things that sort of made uh, uh, this uh, very easy for us to develop. So, a very uh, basic overview of dialogue flow. So, that's the intents. So, you yeah, sort of identify what you want the, the chatbot to do or the, the assistant to do. So, within the intents, there are training phrases. So, what actually uh, will uh, trigger this intent and then what are the responses once this uh, intent is triggered. So uh, parameters is something like uh, what, what sort of info you're looking at uh, when you are uh, when you when this intent is triggered. So uh, it also supports something called slot filling where if you know it's like if you want to book an airline ticket for example uh, very simple use case you know you need all these different parameters. So if one thing is missing Dialogflow can easily uh, prompt the user to fill in the missing pieces. Also context so that uh, uh, context is something like remembering the past history of uh, what was being uh, asked so that uh, if there are various intents that may be very close in nature, uh, Dialogflow may be able to call the correct intent. So entities is something like the food menu items. You need to make sure that all your named entities are inside. I'll, move in. I'll, I'll talk about this later. Fulfillment was uh, because usually most chatbots uh, is like FAQ bot. Right now a lot of the implementations are FAQ bot. But if you want things to uh, have some kind of transaction going on, you need some kind of database, and so there's a fulfillment part. And then also, also talk briefly about the machine learning settings. Uh, we use the hybrid rule base and ML, so I'll go into a bit of details. So, uh, what intends to de develop? So, we examine the potential behavior. You, want, you, you think about your use case, and then, okay, let's uh, do the, the intents. So, the welcome user, just now you guys uh, heard that already, basically, a hello. What else do you think uh, should be developed? So you want to order food, right? So there's this ordering of ordering actions. So we have the basic ones. Uh, oh, change order, cancel order, and uh, making an order. So these are form a group of uh, actions where you want to do order. So we uh, we went beyond some of the simple demos uh, available uh, online, and we made sure that uh, users are able to change and cancel their orders or remove orders. After that, you want to repeat your orders. And then there's a confirmation of order and then proceeding on with the transaction. So basically, we, this was sort of the baseline of what we wanted to implement. Now, what about other intents? When you're dealing with a speech assistant, sometimes it fails to recognize uh, your, your, what, what you actually meant. So what other things uh, you might want to do? You, want to do? you need to do fallback intents. And you will also want to have uh, undo, so you can go back to the previous state. So we actually implemented all this. You can see the interface of dialog flow on the left. So all the, uh, these are all the intents that we actually did. Uh, another thing that we uh, did was uh, recommendations because we actually showcased this and showcased this, and a lot of the people who tried it for the first time they actually asked for recommendations, and we didn't did this. We didn't do this intent, but pretty easy intent to do, and then we actually sort of bring these things to life. So we actually uh, did this. Intent after the event. Okay, so 
even though you have identified all your intents, you need to start to develop your entities. And one thing Dialogflow does quite uh, well is actually it allows us to customize uh, the named entities so you can, you can support your vocabulary. So you, you can see it from here, actually some of it is not even in English, or, or it's Romanized Hokkien or something. And actually it's still okay, it actually works. So we make sure you have all your dish names, it, it supports custom vocabulary, uh, you, you can also provide synonyms if needed, so Milo Kosong can be uh, Milo without sugar, and then you can actually default back to Milo Kosong. We can also sort of think further ahead and say uh, if your restaurant wants to do, use menu codes, you can put like A1, A2, and then people will know that's uh, Milo, for example. So it supports all this. So the training phrases and intents. So after you have done, uh, uh, the, you have identified your intents, you have done your entities, the next thing would, would be to actually uh, provide some training phrases to uh, the intents to, to let them know what exactly uh, triggers this intent. So one of the things is you need to provide uh, parameters which ties into the entity. So what are the parameters that uh, this intent is to look for? And then actually you can highlight in your training uh, phrases below, you can see here, on what actually maps to the parameter. So these are training phrases. So after, when you develop the, the, the intent, for example, the order, uh, you actually have, uh, after you've done the training phrases, it maps to the entities and because of that, uh, it's able to come up with the action. So the action right at the end is uh, Dialogflow will actually say, oh, you, you did an order intent and this is the quantity and the dish. So you are able to push this down to uh, the database. So also another thing to, to, do, to design is the responses for that intent. So one thing is for, if, for chatbots, a lot of chatbots, if you ask a simple question, sometimes like the FAQ chatbots, they'll spam you with a lot of text. But one thing, if you want to do a speech, completely speech enabled UI, you can't actually uh, design your chatbot in such a manner. So we have to keep it short and use random responses when appropriate to sort of make sure the user isn't too jaded with the, with the same responses. So this is like uh, after making an after taking an order, you can actually have a randomized response so that it, it feels more natural. Another thing is you need to design your responses carefully to sort of prompt the user on what to uh, to follow up with. So in this case, we want to, the user to say if if they want to order something, then you order another dish. If you do not want to order uh, and you want to proceed, you need to say something like no, I'm done. Yeah, so that your intents later on for your for for your to prior on with the order it actually works. So actually, how you design this is quite important. Okay, so fulfillment very simple. Uh, we we actually take the, the actions from the intents and then we push it down to the database. So we did this with Firebase. Uh, I don't really want to go into too much details, but it actually allows you to add or remove the orders, and then at the end of the order, you can actually look at the entire cut and tabulate the the price. Another thing to look at is actually the machine learning settings. So we set a 0 0.5 here. So it's something like, uh, imagine the training phrases that you did, uh, but if you set it to 1.0, I think it is completely rule-based. That means you must, the, the user must say that exact sentence. If it just deviates by a bit, uh, it will not work. And then you'll go into fallback intent. So what you want to do here is you let the AI sort of take over and do some kind of uh, uh, AI matching so that uh, if the AI thinks that it's actually uh, referring to this intent, you will actually trigger that intent. Okay, so this is a video of the proof of concept where we put it all together. Oh, did play? I thought I said to play. Doesn't play. Not sure why it doesn't play. One. The video doesn't play. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, it's okay. I can. Uh, we can actually just do the demo. Actually. Um, so. Some are, what are the other things to consider? So there's uh, a and n because you can always say uh, one, one of this, one of that. But what happens if somebody actually says a and n? So you actually need to uh, sort of map a and n into a quantity of one. 
So one thing that we found quite uh, pleased with when using Dialogflow was it sort of tried to alleviate all the NLP issues for us. So by doing a composite entity of a dish quantity, we are actually able to map an end to one. Maybe I can just do the demo. One nasi lemak. Give it a try first. Got it. One nasi lemak. Would you like anything else? I want a cup of kopi si. Oh, too far maybe. Sorry. Ah, Your order far. seems ambiguous. Sorry. <laughs> too far from the mic. <laughs> too many mics to handle. <laughs> One cup of kopi si. Got it. One kopi si, would you like anything else? Oh, I said one. Okay, I want him to say uh, uh, right? So, can I have a cup of kopi si? Got it. One kopi si, would you like anything else? Yeah, so you see the uh and n actually works. Okay, I'll move on. Okay, so another thing uh, is actually multiple order support. So uh, you actually need to specify training phrases. Uh, so again, Dialogflow sort of solved this for us, but because we specify the training phrases, it's able to map all the parameters in for us. Uh, but one thing was, uh, the only unique thing was, if you want to do two, you need to do a training phrase with two. You want to do three, you need to do a training phrase with, training phrase with three, and so on and so forth. But that wasn't too hard. and. Uh, when we did it, the demo, actually, there were users who actually did this. They will actually look at the menu, and then they'll flip with the button pressed down, and they'll order one of this, two of that, three of that, like a very long utterance, and then they let go. Then I was like, oh, please let it work. Yeah, not bad, it actually worked. So maybe we can give a try now. Can I have one nasi lemak, two kopi o kosong, three roti prata? Got it. One nasi lemak, two kopi o kosong, and three roti prata. Would you like anything else? Yeah, so this is a demonstration of the multiple orders. Okay, so generally, when it comes to speech UI, you need to think about when to use it. So it's really use case dependent. Uh, one of the ways that you may want to use this is when uh, you allow users to navigate complex menus. So. If, if the menu is very, very deep, and then you want to uh, sort of go straight into the whatever you actually are looking out for, uh, actually speech UI allows you to do that. Also, it's not a good experience to do this kind of uh, speech bot on common FAQ style bots. For example, uh, you, you, you do something like uh, you ask a question, and then they usually come out with one very long paragraph with multiple options. And then if you use the text to speech and the fellow just starts, talking for a minute, it's not a very good user experience. So you need to think about uh, when you want to implement speech. So you also have to consider uh, what happens if an utterance is recognized incorrectly. So maybe I can do the undo order now. Undo order. Oops. I missed that. Say that again. Sorry. Can I undo that order? I have restored to your previous ordering state. Anything else? Yeah, so uh, in case the chatbot got it wrong, you can actually uh, do a revert. Okay, so another thing is, I, I, I notice sometimes when you're on uh, a, a chatbot or your help desk or something, you are, you're typing stuff and then the, the chatbot can actually ask, are we still talking about this topic? But you wouldn't want to do this with speech, text-to-speech especially, you might startle the user, suddenly the chatbot starts speaking. So you need to consider all this. Also, uh, some other things, uh, you need to reduce possible states to avoid user confusion. So, uh, some states may make sense in text-based or hybrid chatbots, but uh, for speech UI, for example, in this uh, complex state where it occurred a few times, so we decided to, to actually do away with it. Uh, so, for example, the chatbot, uh, you, you, you say it starts to repeat the order. I, I can actually demonstrate this to you. I'm done. Okay. Let me repeat your order. One nasi lemak, two kopisi. The total amount will be six dollars and twenty cents. May I proceed with your order? Yeah. So sometimes you, uh, the speaker tries uh, some gibberish, or they, they 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 do something else, and then and then the chatbot says, uh, "Sorry, I don't understand," which is actually correct. But actually, what happens is the state resets. When the state resets, you can't proceed. 
So what happens? You say the user says proceed, then because it's in the wrong state, it's still waiting for more orders. The, the tripod no longer understands what's going on, and then uh, it's a very bad user experience. So we decided to allow a, a we made a design decision where we allow the user to proceed without actually repeating the order speech. Maybe for a trained user at a restaurant, they might decide to proceed. They, they wouldn't want the tripod to repeat the order. Yes. So other thing is the slot filling part, like for example, missing quantity. Uh, we have to find a balance and make a design choice whether you want to allow slot filling. So for example, the, the, the user can say, uh, nasi lemak, and then the chatbot will say, uh, how many? Uh, maybe I can give it a try now. Nasi lemak. All right. How many nasi lemak do you want? Yeah, so now you might actually confuse, uh, even a human waiter will be confused if you proceed and say 2T. Uh, and then, and then the, the, the AI will actually uh, take this as 2 nasi lemak. So you can do some workarounds on this, but actually you might introduce a lot of complex uh, coding and intents within your, your chatbot, which you might not want. Uh, so we made a judgment call, we, we wouldn't want to handle this. We'll, we'll, We'll assume the user is just uh, playing uh, because there were when we did this uh, demo to people, people actually do fall into this uh, slot filling uh, use case, and they actually liked it where they, they say the, the dish name, and then after that they say the quantity. So most users actually uh, did it correctly. So we decided to continue with slot filling in this case, but that's something to consider because you can uh, in Dialogflow you can actually you can actually have it such that uh, if the user does not provide all the slots, you just say. Please, uh, please tell me the quantity and the food item. You can actually do that. So uh, we, 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 did, we did get a lot of feedback and uh, fleshing out the experience for this, which we didn't do. Uh, you can actually uh, modify the orders after sending to the kitchen. That's one of the things that they thought about. They thought we were doing a product, but this is not a product, this is just a POC. Another thing is to uh, describe the dishes and to list the ingredients. So these are pretty, uh, pretty easy intents to do, uh, to flesh out this experience. Okay, so some uh, some uh, some other uh, people uh, might be interested in the ASR behind this, and does it really require a complicated ASR, ASR engine, speech recognition engine to uh, do? But actually, what we did was we used a very simple uh, language modeling. The data we used was actually very simple and small, and scoped only to these use case. So if you try to uh, uh, ask it how's the weather, it's not going to work. It's not really meant for transcription work, so it's, but it still performed admirably, uh, as you can hear. And uh, also, uh, we use a very small language model. That this, this shows that if your use case is very, very well defined, you can actually uh, use a pretty simple ASR and do it on device. And uh, we also try to, you know, software engineering can just uh, fix common issues. For example, uh, if uh, I have an intent that uh, allows you to change an order, so you can say something like, I want to change one nasi lemak to two chicken chop, but the two two, the ASR might come out with two two, so you can just quickly fix it with a T-O-T-W-O, no problems there. Okay, so this is an, the example of the language model that we used, and this is actually a very, 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 very small size language model. I'm not very sure whether most of you know about AI, uh, but for this use case, it's a very, very simple language model, and it actually worked pretty, pretty good. Okay, so the overall thoughts is uh, that speech UI uh, opens up new ways of interactions, uh, but it's necessary to design it appropriately. Uh, and speech technology can actually be used in such use cases. So maybe one day uh, you can actually use speech UI to uh, set up your Kubernetes. I do not know. Maybe it's possible. Uh, so compositional UI technology is starting to improve uh, because we, we played around with dialogue flow and. The NLP elements that we thought may be very hard, like er and n, can this be solved? The multiple ordering, actually it was done pretty easily. Uh, but one thing to note also, uh, there's different reactions when we did this demo uh, between the younger and older generations. The younger people, they will be like, oh, you can even do uh, orders where you say something and something and they're already very impressed. But the older gen, they were not impressed with this demo. They didn't like it. And some of them even, uh, like I said, my project was about the compass, but they were complaining about, huh, the restaurant industry, the service is so bad already, and you want to do this? <laughs> uh, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, but these are things to take note. You might, you might want to make sure that your, your audience is very receptive to this kind of technologies. Also, another thing is that uh, 5G, uh, I think in Singapore, will be de probably deployed next year. It actually opens up new possibilities. Uh, the number of devices, IoT, the latency will be reduced. 
So this type of conversations actually the latency will be much improved and the bandwidth and also the cloud services uh, will, will, will actually uh, and, and cloud will, will, will even though now cloud is really very popular 5G I think you actually uh, make up the adoption even better uh, also the microphone chosen I have to juggle with so many microphones here but uh, you have to make sure that your placement is important and the type of mics you use is important uh, depending on your use case and also uh, sort of to sort of bring the NSC back into the picture we need to localize as much as possible uh, to get the pronunciations correct and the accent correct to sort of give the user a comfortable experience Okay, so we actually uh, will be, we actually released this, uh, the code that we did on dialogue flow, we actually released it as part of a natural speech transition technology. So it's sort of like a, a toolkit where uh, developers can sort of get started on speech technologies. Uh, and the, the dialogue flow code that we, we developed was, is actually available as well. Uh, it's under a license, but uh, you have to speak with my BD people behind. Uh, it's available by a free license, so you just have to uh, sign up. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, yeah, in